Hello, everyone, and welcome to this second bite size research data webinar that we have today on how to create a research data management plan. My name is Sean Lacey. I am the university's research integrity compliance officer. And today I'm joined by Teresa Hearn, the metadata and research data librarian, who's going to speak to us on how to create a research data management plan. Before I hand over to, uh, sorry, to Therese, I'm just going to just maybe try to set the scene a small bit to what is a data management plan and maybe why are we actually doing it? So a data research data management plan is called out in our research data management policy to the definition of to how we actually describe it, whereby, and I'll actually read this text out because it's important that you further to be an awareness to what actually a research data management plan actually is. So it's a formal document that outlines how data is to be handled both during a research project and after the project is completed. Data management plans must assure that research data adheres to the principles of being findable, accessible, interoperable, and reproducible, and that it is accurate, citable, securely stored, and adheres to clearly defined legal parameters and appropriate con uh, control measures governing subsequent use. Now you'd say, look, why am I saying all that? I mean, you're well able to read it yourselves. So I suppose if you look at that and look at the text that's there and to what it actually means, this that is the motivation for us to actually be doing these bite-sized research data webinars. Collectively across the last, from last, oh, I suppose over the last couple of months, we have facilitated five research data webinars, including this one today, whereby the, what we would have had before is we would have had a webinar on how to password protect your research data, another one on how to encrypt your research data, another one how to sh uh, store and share uh, your, your research data securely, and on an open data repository. Recently, we did how to anonymize, pseudonymize, and de-identify your research data. And today, we're looking at how to create a research data management plan. And the reason for doing this is because of what's called out in our research data management policy. And the, how uh, having a data management plan is actually so important as part of the research journey that you're on. One or two, I mean, two other things just to be aware of when it comes to the policies that we have locally first is that in our research data management policy, it calls out that all new research proposals should include a research data management plan or protocols that explicitly address data capture, management, integrity, confidentiality, ret retention, sharing, and publication. So this is called out in our local research data management policy. Also in our research integrity policy, it calls out that it's an unacceptable research practice uh, to, I suppose, ha be handling our data poorly whereby if we're not preserving our, our primary data, if we're looking at poor data management or poor storage of our data, that is called out as an unacceptable research practice. And I say locally part, as here as a, as a start because that's what we have in our local policies, but we're aligned with what's done nationally, in, in, as in the guidance that has, we have from the National Research Integrity Forum, and what is also done internationally with the OECD, the uh, ALEA, all European academies, and also Science Europe. OK, so this is, I mean, what uh, Therese is going to outline to us here is actually helping us to align with not just local requirements, but also national and international requirements and expectations as well. So handing over to Therese here on how to create a research data management plan. Thank you, Therese. Just be aware you're on mute there, Trez. Yep. Thanks, Sean. Um, right. So, um, yep. So, thanks, thanks for that introduction, Sean. So, yeah. Also, as part of those policies, um, is the university's obligation to provide training and guidance on um how to actually go about um adhering to the policies, and um. Uh, one of the best ways to manage your research data is to create a research data management plan. Um, and uh, I suppose the reason why we're all gathered here today is is to answer the question, you know, why why should we have a formal plan? Why should there be policies um, and legislation, um, essentially, certainly funder mandates dictating a formal plan? And the reality is in traditional publishing, um, that the, the the final publication itself, almost the advertisement of the research was where all the plaudits um and, and where where they currently go. Um and the, the the raw data that went into creating the results um for that publication um 
were often kind of set aside or um not thought about uh afterwards not managed properly um which can lead to um to oversight which can lead to a lack of an ability to to essentially check that that these that these results were correct that the data was correct in the first place um and that the data cycle um throughout the research cycle um was in fact uh, correct and all above board and so on um so some of the the, the issues with um not having data managed correctly, not having it stored correctly, not being able to revisit it um, is a, a reproducibility crisis in, in the entirety of research, essentially. Um, and uh, one famous study from, from Nature showed that um, in a sample of roughly 1,500 researchers that 70% um, of them were unable to reproduce somebody else's research. Um, and quite alarmingly, 50% of them um, on average were unable to reproduce their own research after the fact and after publishing it. Um, so um, uh, as well as the, the policies that, that Sean has, has already spoken about, so our, our local policies here, um, and as well as uh, international guidance um, calling for the formalized process of managing research data um, and making it available um, so that we can we can have best practice in reproducibility. Um, the, the funders have got on board as well, um, seeing the value in this. Um, you know, there's also um, as well as reproducibility, we can reduce research waste. Um, we can, um, of course, you know, maintain um, uh, research integrity, um, again, by quality controlling um, what data researchers are producing and so on. Um, and the, the funders, as I say, have got on board. So these are, you know, kind of just just a selection of our major um, funders um, and award uh, that, that award funding to MTU researchers and each of these will have uh, a policy or a mandate on uh, data management plans um, most of them now as well will have recommended templates that they uh, wish their researchers to adhere to um, throughout the research cycle um, but most importantly for us really um, that uh, certainly Horizon Europe um, and the others, Horizon Europe leading the way really on, um, so at the earliest stage of research um, that, that your data management plan would be uh, thought about uh, by all partners and um, a, a formal plan put in place and um, in a lot of cases actually submitted to, to the funder at an early stage so that um, it forms part of the uh, the funding award um, and, and whether that can happen. So um, I suppose, uh, you know, I suppose a kind of, there, there's a carrot and a, and a stick principle here. Um, the carrot being that, look, this is best practice. It's a good thing to do uh, for research in general, for the common good, for research integrity, um, and also the, the funders now, the money is beginning to talk. Um, the funders are mandating that this forms part of your formal research process. Okay, so um they haven't left us entirely in the dark. I mean, there's the, you know, there's a lot of um in terms of data management planning, there's a there's a lot of items that can be uh, left open to interpretation. Um they leave it, you know, broad broad enough and um, it's based on recommendations um how to actually go about creating a data management plan um but uh, the vast majority of um data management plans required by funders will need to follow what is called the fair data principles um, and this means that at the end of the day you um you will uh you know put in black and white in your data management plan, how you plan to make your data findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Um, 
all resulting in a reproducible um, product that is as open as, as possible um, so that it can be utilised by other researchers, by yourself uh, down the line for possibly unforeseen um, value add um, and, uh, you know, that, that, it, that it can be audited um, by, uh, by organisations that... Uh, that, uh, that, that may need to do that just to make sure, again, that everything is above board. Um, so what do we mean by fair? So findable, look, we want to make sure that the data is easy to find by both humans and computer systems um, in the first place. Um, the best way to do this is assign persistent IDs like a DOI um, and rich recognized metadata. And the, the best way to do that in turn is to register it in a searchable resource. Um, so I'm going to, you know, cut to, to, to the main um, resource that, that we would recommend in MTU, and that is Zenodo as, as a data um, repository. It essentially um, assigns the uh, persistent ID for you, um, as well as um, the standardized metadata um, that is understood to be, again, uh, following international best practice. Um, next up, accessible. So, so if we found our, our data set that we want to look at, or if we found our own after however many years, um, we, uh, we, we want to make sure that it's accessible. So we do this by ensuring that it's preserved long term um, and is easily accessible, well-defined licenses and conditions. So this is, again, um, where your uh, data repository can come, can come in. Um, and assign these licenses for you um, and uh, showing this in your data plan. Um, but obviously, you know, we spoke uh, last week about anonymizing sensitive data. Um, so there absolutely are cases where all of your data will not be able to be um, to be opened up um, or publicized or or even placed on a, on a data repository. Um, and there's a, as long as you can justify that, that is absolutely no problem. As long as you can say there's an NDA here or that, um, you know, this is there was personal raw information, so it had to be processed. Um, uh, as And the line is, is that it's as open as possible, but also as closed as necessary so that we meet uh, legislation such as GDPR and so on there. Um, again, um, the best way to do this is assigning standardized IDs, protocols and, um, and metadata to make our data accessible. Um, it also needs to be interoperable. Um, so, um, and this means that data is ready to be used for future research research and to be processed further by computer systems. So if you have um, a load of code um, or, you know, even, um, you know, a, a, a spreadsheet full of data um, in columns and rows and it's in PDF and it's uh, or it's in um, you know, proprietary uh, software that is extremely expensive or or not around anymore or impossible to um to, for your institution to to get and provide you with, and um, then it's not of much much use. So we're asking again people to provide rich, accurate metadata so that so that we can actually see what we're looking at that it's you know that it's readable, um that we again have clear licenses, provenance, community standards and so on. Um, and we're trying to, I suppose here, we're, look, we're trying to move towards open source as much as possible, just just so that we can um, we can actually, um, you know, use that data, that it is interoperable with standard um, and um, standard software and that we can read it um, and know what it actually is. Um, and finally, uh, we want our data to be reusable. Um, so data is ready to be combined with other data sets uh, by humans or computer systems. Uh, the best way to do this is to use formal, um, you know, applicable languages, standard vocabularies, qualified references, etc. Um, in terms of machine reading, but again, um, you know, it could be as simple as uh, labeling your columns in such a way that they can be human readable. Um, you know, if we're talking about a CSV file, that um, you know, it's not all uh, 
X, X, Y, Z, and the code isn't available. There's no readme file and so on. Um, that we want to uh that we want to make that item uh reusable. I will change the image for the for the slides that are that are going to be transferred there. My apologies. There will be a reusable image. Um so yes, yeah, so there are four items. There are principles. Um uh, that is uh, just a really quick run through of fair data. That is how, that is the, the umbrella, that is the overarching principle of how we put together our data management plan, and um, how we plan for it to be fair. And um, uh, again, one of the best ways to do that is to, is to, to you know, state all of the, the requirements of a data management template but also um, utilizing uh, a really good um, data repository such as Zenodo or one um, a specialist data repository related to your subject area is the best way to go about that. Now, um, in putting together the actual data management plan, um, the university has also promised in its policy to provide tools um, as well as training like this um, to, to enable you to put that together. Um, we subscribe, to, MTU Library subscribes to um, a tool that um, allows you to do exactly this. It's called DMP Online. It's at dmponline.dcc.ac.uk. Uh, um, these notes will be available afterwards. And um, you simply, uh, you know, you, you can Google that. You simply log in and um, get going and create a plan step by step according to uh, what it tells you. So I'm just going to break out of the, the presentation there and um, go to uh, DMP Online Live just to take you through um, again, just a quick fire um, round of, uh, of how DMP Online actually works and how we get going with creating a data management plan uh, live. Um, so I hope that you can see uh, the live website there. Um, so essentially this is this is your opening page. You sign in um, and uh, create an account. Um, I am going to add one caveat, unfortunately, at the moment, our institutional credentials because of the merger, there's there's just a bit of an issue with our HEA um attributes. Uh, we're working it out with uh, with um with them at the moment. Um, uh, but it's just it's just a short glitch at the moment. It doesn't affect the working of this. It just simply affects um uh you syncing your account to uh to MTU possibly. But we're hoping hoping that um that that be a quick fix. Uh, by our IT and HEA net in the near future. Um, so once we have uh, essentially created our account, um, we are going to go to uh, DMP online and um, just going to go back along there now. Sorry. So if we simply go into Create plans, sorry, sign in. So uh, these are plans that um that I set up as a as a regular MTU researcher uh, earlier. So if we just set up a new one, this is what we're going to be met with. Uh, so what kind of research project are you planning? Uh, for today's purposes, we're just going to tick the mock project for testing. This is a nice way to uh, to play around with this uh, this tool as well. Uh, uh, going forward as well, just just ticking these boxes of um, you know not particularly committing to anything, but you know there's no issue either way. Um, if you do create any data management plans, they'll just appear there for yourself. Uh, to see anyway. Um, so funders, um, so you can you can choose uh, from a list of funders, just begin typing there to see. Um, but to give you an idea of what funder requirements are, they have a helpful reference page up here. When you click in funder requirements, they just um, give you an idea of um, 
uh, what funders they have available, what templates they have available. So if we just scroll down, if we just go by last updated, we can see here that um, we have a nice uh, European Research Council. We also have Horizon Europe's template. Um, so depending on who your funder is, you can go exactly to there. Otherwise, if you're just creating um, a, a, a data management plan uh, for your own possibly, you know, non-funded research for your own MTU research, um, the ERC one is, an, is a nice one to use. Um, I'll just give you uh, an example of it there. Um, so this is this is kind of a typical um, data management plan template. So you'll have your summary of your uh, project title and so on, and then um, how you're going to make your data fair. This is this is in most of them. Um, and um, as we can see, this is quite a short one, um, which is, you know, and, and that's and that's what a lot of them are. Um, it's what what's your project? Um, how's your data? Um, and uh, actually, sorry, it's Science Europe that I wanted to look at uh, specifically. Um, so if you all uh, Science Europe is, an, is, is a nice one um, and it's it's comprehensive as well. Uh, so, yeah, so again, look, it's just asking you the questions. It's one page um, and, you know, at the end there, just what resources will be dedicated to data management and ensuring the data will be fair. They all mention fair somewhere. Um, uh, so they all want to know what data you will have, what size it is, who will have access to it um, and uh, how you plan to store it. That is the again the main aspects of of many of these data management plans. So if we go back to uh if we go back to our um created um if we go back to our created plans, just go here. So um you'll ask us again, what are we planning? Um We'll select the primary funding organization. So um, in this case, we'll say Science Europe. Um, we'll go on to create the plan. Um, again, look, it'll just look for, for an abstract, research domain, and so on, dates. But we can save that. Um, then it will ask us to add contributors. So. Um, you don't have to do that at this point to carry on. Um, you can add contributors and uh, later on, I'll show you where you can um, dictate what kind of access those contributors have and um, whether they have editing access or just reading access, or you can keep it entirely to yourself as well at this point. Um, and then because we've chosen Science Europe as our funder, um, or we want to use the, them as our template, it gives us a plan overview that um, Science Europe uh, recommend. So it gives us Science Europe's uh, data management plan template applied to our project. And then we get into the nitty gritty of it and we write our plan um, and all of the parts of the overview that we saw there, all of the parts of the template, um, it, it provides text boxes for us that we can fill in and go ahead um, and complete that data management plan utilizing the information from our own project um, as much or as, or as little of it as we wish. Okay, um, so yeah, again, all relating back to whether, uh, how we're going to make our data fair. Again, um, we can add here our research outputs and so on. Um, and we can talk about sharing then after our actual data management plan. So we can set plan visibility. We can keep it uh, private to ourselves if we wish um, or our specified collaborators and administrators within our organization. Um, so myself and Sean are administrators of DMP Online for MTU. So if you wish us to review, um, or if you wish myself anyway to, to review a data management plan, um, that is that is a service that we provide here in MTU. Um, 
and we absolutely welcome uh, requests like that. Um, if we want to make it open within MTU so that um, as soon as somebody kind of syncs their, uh, their personal account with MTU, then um, we can make that openly available to, to everyone um, that signs up for a DMP online account, or we can make it public. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, all of this is 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 up to yourselves. Um, this is just a description of, of your data and how you're planning on storing it rather than the actual data yourself, uh, data itself. The data itself, if it's sensitive, it's going to be stored in your own secure and encrypted uh, hard drives um, and the data management plan um, or 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 if it's you know if you're if you're hoping to make your data open or the parts of it that you can make open they're going to be on your data uh, repository such as Zenodo um, um, this is just about sharing the data management plan so lots of people do I'm going to show you an example of where this database this this website has a data play, a database of public data management plans again to guide you uh, they're a, a really good resource to show how others have completed um data management plans according to particular templates then um once we have completed our plan we can download um in in these formats we can send it on to our funder possibly um we can download it and edit it send that on to our funder um send it on to myself for review um or i can look at it in here um and so on um so again just some nice options of step by step completing a data management plan and moving forward with it so just on those public data management plans again you know they have uh, they're all here um you can look at the uh the template so dcc and so on if you're looking for specifically how people filled out horizon europe data management plans you can look here health research board that's ireland um and so on same with um the uh so sfi recommend that you use um the erc template and so on um but uh, they don't they don't have all templates but um they do have some quite useful ones um and again look even just just an example you can go in there and this is a real live data management plan that someone created and they made public um, most to utilize um okay so this is a bite-sized session so that was a, a quick fire round um and uh yeah that that's me done obviously if you if you need more detail do get in contact um and we can help you out with that okay so that's me done there sean perfect thanks very much trace thanks for that um so i suppose for the, to see the feedback there in the chat thanks very much for that um so i suppose uh trace would you go back to the dmp there uh Yep. Just where it had the sharing options. Sure. Um, I think you were you were creating one there and it had Yeah. Um maybe it's one of your other tabs there that you had opened up high. I know we are on the Let me just go out of that. Uh where's the most recent one? Probably here. Um yeah. yeah. So if we go to share, yeah. So yeah, so this is just a nice functionality I find with DMP online that when you create one, you can look keep it private, where whereby you might share it with your own research team. Uh, at the very least, uh, that, that I suppose that's the bare minimum, and I suppose that will be important to share with the research team so that there's a general understanding to how research data is going to actually be stored and managed. But I suppose what we would encourage, though, I mean, and I think that this is this is kind of I suppose. Uh, a leap to a certain extent is where when you create your research data management plan that you might set it as or, an organization whereby everyone in MTU could actually see it so that they can maybe learn and it kind of can create that bit of culture around sharing these things openly. Equally, public is obviously really what we strive for in time. Now, nobody's required to share it uh, publicly or share it even within the organization. I, I would generally say, look, it's encouraged. Um, it is useful to share because you can see the ones that are up online there that uh, Trace just went through one. They can be used, you know, to help future researchers to how to actually create a DMP because there is always, and I would find it personally myself, when I created my first DMP, it's slightly overwhelming. Look, am I putting in the right information here? 
And I would say that that would have been the same when I did my first DMP, when I would have done my first research ethics application form. I come from a statistics background. So when I would have done my first statistical analysis plan, there's always that little hesitancy and uncertainty at the start. But then when you start doing it over and over as part of your research, uh, you, I suppose your own research process, it does become automatic and you start to realize, look, there's not a whole lot to this. So there's always a learning curve, but it does actually flatten out. Uh, and that's from my own my own experiences. I I would say that. Um, when it comes to I suppose, if can you look at the template ones that are online there, Trace? Yeah, sure. Is it possible to? But you know what the search there, and I just can't remember. It. Like we could search by like if we type in a research instrument, we get something back in the search there. Like if we typed in survey or something like that, we would find DMPs that would link to survey data. So then you could say, look, well, how did other organizations write a DMP around? Uh, so, uh, collecting data using surveys equally you could do this using focus groups and interviews now I suppose that it, you don't have to do that but I suppose it just gives a nice functionality of where you can kind of see that look how others have done it I would also think and Trey has touched on this and I suppose this is something I'd always find as a massive comfort it's a kind of a live document so it does it's not when you write it at the first time it's not something that's set in stone like anything with plans, we might have the best plans in place at the start of any research journey that we're on, but then things change. Maybe we had to change our research instrument. Maybe the research partners change. It's only natural. And I suppose if your DMP changes, as in if you're how you plan on managing your data changes, you update your DMP accordingly. So, I mean, it's not something that when you write it up the first time, and even if you share it the first time, that that's it fixed. It can be edited. Now, obviously, like anything, when we do it, we obviously want it to be, you know, something that we can kind of stand over. We don't want to be wasting our own time. But it is something that you can re revisit as well. Um, another thought then that I'd had, I just, as you were working through it there, the download, would you mind just popping that up on the screen there, uh, Trez, please? Because I re personally, I really liked this. Um, when you that download function you'll just have to go yeah perfect back into it again yeah yep. this is really nice um so because you can just download it as a pdf which is where it is just a document but you cannot obviously all of these would be just a document but what i really liked is the doc the word file the docx one because you can format the text and everything and the size and really, like sometimes, like especially if, if there's research students in the room here, you might want to put your DMP in your appendix for your thesis. And it just slots in quite nicely then if you download it as a Word file. It's quite easy then to, you know, to put that in as an appendix. It just it kind of gives that, I suppose, usability. To, it, you know, it, it really helps that. And, I, to, and to me, that's not an obstacle. Sometimes we use these platforms and the output then is something that we can't necessarily reuse or we might have to take screen grabs and be putting it in and it doesn't work as well. There's loads of different functionality when it comes to the format. And that's something that I've leveraged myself in my own research. And um, yeah, I suppose they were just the different observations that I would have had based on using DMP as well. Uh, but happy, look, are there some, any other questions then for this? Uh, just nice positive feedback in the chat there, which is brilliant. I, I would think then sometimes when we write these things up, uh, we can be unsure. Are we putting in the right information? Is it too much, too little? That's where Teresa said, look, that she's there as a support to help that. That's obviously where you obviously have the plans online to also help you with that. And like they're shared openly for them to be reused. OK, equally, then there's also a case of where if you end up spending a significant amount of time put together a DMP, you could uh, submit that as part of a digital badge. If you wanted to a micro credential that we have in the university around research data management, if you're interested in that, it's just kind of, I suppose, gets a small bit of recognition of the work that you're doing if you end up engaging with this uh, data management plan and DMP online. Any questions people uh, people may have? Just one in the chat there. Fiona's just yeah. wondering about just dissemination of this in general. Yeah, so... Um, so just one chat there, to, well, one comment there in the chat, just wondering if you amend your DMP and you had included the original in a research ethics application, would you need to send the new DMP to the research ethics committee? Okay, so it would really depend on, like, I, I suppose it would ultimately depend, look, on what are actually the changes. Like, do the changes, are they having, are they having an ethical impact? Okay, so for example, we'll just say something, we'll say your DMP, 
you would set it up initially that you were going to be collecting survey data. And that's what your research ethics application form is all around survey data. Then you decided, actually, do you know what? Now surveys aren't really working for me. I'm going to be doing focus groups. And you change your DMP accordingly. Well, changing your research instrument from surveys to focus groups actually has an ethical implication. So you would reach out to your, your ethics committee and let them know that that's the case. OK, um, if you wanted to change, I suppose, something around maybe the format that you're you're storing in Excel, uh, your data in, maybe instead of an Excel file, you're going to be storing it somewhere else. That probably doesn't that doesn't necessarily have a massive implication ethically. So you wouldn't necessarily have to let you know your ethics committee that um, I suppose I, I try not to commit too much because it does really vary depending on look what the changes are. All I would say just in response to that question is if you're unsure Look, just reach out, reach out to the research ethics committee, let them know that you're making these changes. Is this something that needs to be formally noted by the research ethics committee or not? And just as an FYI, if you are making a change to your research ethics application form, that doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to go through the whole process again of a monthly meeting. It depends on what the change is. And there is a form that we have up online for that, whereby you might be want to make an amendment to an improved research ethics application form. And if there's a couple of minor amendments that you want to make, well, then that can be processed quite fast. If you're making a significant number of amendments, maybe the easiest thing is to go through the whole review process again. But that's something that I suppose we you'd know you'd have I suppose you'd have the answer to through asking that question more, uh, and reaching out to the uh, HREC. No problem whatsoever. I'm just going to pop that link to the, into the chat there just for uh, the Human Research Ethics webpage because there is a document that we have there uh, uh, towards the end. It's in one of the accordings at the end around if you happen to want to be changing your research ethics application form or some aspect of your research study has changed that impacts the research ethics application form, how do you do that? So there's a, there's a document at the end of the webpage there in one of the accordions that will point you in that direction. Um, I suppose just to um just to to add to that point as well, um that yeah your 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 funder would possibly have a policy um related to data management plan versions um and drafts that um that yeah that that they they might have guidelines if if something was to change in your data management plan or if it needed to be added to and so on because they are viewed as organic documents um that will probably change over time that they would have guidelines uh for you to do that but the key is to to yet yeah, record um to record any changes um and make those available again as part of your data management plan um, so yeah, that is that is that is an important part of of this, um, that openness and uh, and integrity. Thanks very much, Trace. Any other questions from anyone in the room? Okay, that's that's great. Look, the whole idea to these bite sized uh, research data webinars is that they're supposed to be short to the point to uh, covering a particular task. Trace, you've done that excellently with outlining how to create a research data management plan. Thanks very much uh, for doing that. As Trace mentioned, it, it, when you're in the process of doing this yourself, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to her and uh, she, she'll support as best as possible. But if there's no other questions there in, in the chat or nobody wants uh, has a question to maybe through their, their own mic, then we can leave it there. No problem. That's great to get the, that lovely feedback in the chat. Thanks very much, everyone. I, we, we leave it there. So thank you. Thanks very much, Trace. Thanks, John.